once you get into this field, whether you are pre OSCP or post OSCP, you're always learning. There is no, hey, I made it, I arrived, now give me my money. It's never like that. So you definitely want to be a lifelong pursuer of the news and to always tie that back to your studies. What's good? This is Dan May from Unknown Artists, the Cyber Threat Division. And today I'm gonna to tell you about my journey to the OSCP. So I start off as a threat hunter. My organization requires me to get the CEH. So I get that. CEH, if you don't know, is the Certified Ethical Hacker certification offered by EC Council. Get through that and I worked it for my organization maybe about six months, maybe about eight months. And my supervisor comes up with a good idea to get a team together to go at hack the box and so that we could rank up and, and learn a lot of things. So I was super excited about that, although I knew nothing at all about penetration testing and hacking and, and how I would ever fit into this picture. But I just stuck with it and there were a lot of, of late nights. But uh, I started to get a better methodology down for attacking machines, watched a lot of IPSEC, kind of like everybody else, and learned a lot. And then the opportunity came up to take PWK in the OSCP. My boss got maybe 30 people together and we all over Microsoft Teams got together and we went at the OSCP. About five of the 30 passed. I was not one of those five that passed. I failed the first exam with a zero. Um, learned some lessons there. Basically one of the one of the three lessons that I learned from my first exam was to not use auto recon auto recon just doesn't work with my brain it was just too much and i didn't get the sense or i didn't get that feeling to deep dive into each protocol and then on top of that i completely missed anything that was vulnerable any software versions i missed all of that the second thing that i think that um, I should have done on my first attempt was I shouldn't have moved on to another box until I got root. So once I scanned the 10 point box, that was my commitment to get root. But instead of doing that, I moved on and I said, Hey, let me just see what's over here. Let me just scan this box. Let me just scan all the boxes and just like browse and I completely broke the try try harder code. The try harder code says to stick with that box, be inside that box, own that box mentally before you own that box in real life. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the third thing kind of relates to the second thing, which is when you have a protocol, make sure you deep dive into your methodology and exhaust your methodology before you move on. So those are the three things that I would give to anyone that is going to take the OSCP. So I went ahead and scheduled my second attempt maybe almost a year after I failed the first attempt. Between those two attempts, I took and passed the GXPN that is SEC 660, which is a SANS certification. And once I got that, that gave me confidence to go at the OSCP again, took it, and I took the whole 24 hours, but I passed with 75 points, didn't get the 25 pointer. I came up with the idea to put all of my notes in the Excel format and do TJ Knowles' list so I completely avoided the labs on the second attempt. And stacking those notes in a parallel format was so monumental to me that um, it pushed me over the edge. Now that, I, I gotta brag on it because being able to compare and contrast machines just clicked in my mind. It was like a light bulb that went off in my mind. And if you want to check that video out, um, I'm, you can check it out above. I used my own try harder mentality where I said, hey, I'm on this 10 point box. I'm not going to leave this 10 point box until I've rooted it. 
I'm on this 20 point box. I'm not going to leave this 20 point box until I root it. What do I mean by leave? I mean that I don't scan the next box. I don't start on the buffer overflow. I don't peek at the 25 pointer. I'm going to stay here and, and I'm going to root it and then I'm going to move on. When you scan that box, make that your commitment to get root on that box. And that's that's one of the things that I tell my students at work on when I'm training people to get the OSCP is that's your commitment. That's pretty much your wedding ring. You put a wedding ring on that box to make sure that you root that box. And once you root it, you can then divorce it and move on. So um, that's probably a <laughs> crazy metaphor or, or so one of those roadmaps for you if you were looking for a roadmap to follow is to get a defensive mindset first get a it related mindset and then jump into the oscp because now you understand the whole picture the scope a lot better the second roadmap you can take is more of my roadmap where you just jump into a group and hope for the best um it worked out for me but you could definitely take that roadmap. And the third roadmap would be to join the military and hack for the government. And from there, branch over into OSCP. I'm not a recruiter. I don't know what country you're from, but I do know that it is a thing that countries do. So that may be the roadmap for you. I want this channel to be very community driven. I want it to be about the viewer, the subscriber, because there's no point in imposing what I want you to know on you. It should really be about, hey, I'm at work. I don't want to be a noob. I don't want to be on the bench. Teach me what you know. Teach me about the lessons that you have learned. Teach me about your pitfalls so that I don't make them. Welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy it. I am Dan Main for Unknown Artists, and we out.